Um, I'm, I'm David Robert Lewis. I'm the uh, ad hoc uh, chair of Musenberg Electricity Crisis Committee. And uh, we're an uh, interim organization created in February during, uh, you could say, peak uh, load chain. And um, there's been no respite. In fact, uh, conditions have worsened. But uh, instead of getting grumpy and disheartened, we've decided to rather be a force for good, a force for change, um, a force for um, economic development and upliftment in our community by essentially creating a, a, an organization that, because of the challenges, um, we, we've had to dramatically expand our parameters. Ordinarily, um, an organization such as ourselves would be a DIY hobbyist group of uh, part-time electronics um, uh, dabblers. Um, you can perhaps call people like that. So alchemists is probably a nicer term. But um, we've had to dramatically ex expand our agenda and we've come up with a proposal. It's a modest proposal for an um, electricity cooperative. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's see if I can. All right. So, uh, um, this is a picture really of some emblematic of the current situation. Every day, um, life in South Africa is like having a pylon, electricity pylon, smashed through your rooftop and um, Disrupt, very disruptive. And unfortunately, fortunately, treating this as if it's the weather, if it's, um, living in denial of the situation and, and, and just rolling with the punches um, leads us to a situation where there's just further disruption, further um, um, de industrialization of our country. And that's an unfortunate um, critique. And I'm not going to dabble too much in, on what is wrong. Let's look at what we can do that is right, okay? Uh, so we've had enough of the empty promises, whether it's the promises that have been made by national government, of, the, of uh, you know, the, the last um, speech by the uh, Reserve Bank governor, um, talking about deregulation as if it's something new, that it's like on the agenda, it's, it's a moot point. I mean, this is a debate that's been 20 odd years. Um, or the, DA, City Metro, also promising us if you live in Constantia, your back is covered, there's feed in tariffs, but nothing directed at people who might be in, in rental accommodation who might also be similarly situated and suffering. So, um, aside from the stalemate, what, what, is there a way forward? And the answer, surprisingly, is yes. In fact, we don't actually have to change anything, we don't have to legislate. We don't have to propose, we don't have to do anything because we have a, a fantastic Cooperatives Act. Um, the last time it was amended in 2013. I'm sorry, Mama okay. I'm sorry, Baba. Come, Baba. Mommy's going to look after you. Sorry, there's no. To me? Do you know Plaster? Oh, sure. So the 2013 amendment, the Cooperatives Act, essentially. Um, lower the financial reporting requirements for cooperatives, creating new uh, categories of co-ops um, so that um, those under a million rand turnover uh, are exempt from auditing and other financial controls aside from the normal um, accounting, which um, is very useful when you're trying to start up a co-op. Um, it's also lowered the, the, the burden as to how many people would be required to um, start a co-op and we have sufficient members as we speak. Um, the requisite amount is five. Um, there are some 30 odd um, um, members of our forum who are non-active members a as we speak. Um, so the uh, cross-attunity that we, that we is presented by load shedding is a good opportunity um, to start a business but even better time to start a cooperative. I believe cooperatives are the way forward because essentially that is what is wrong with the, the current um, bureaucratic uh, government speed. 
Everyone is talking about anti-privatisation versus privatisation. We're not a private venture, we're a cooperative. Um, we fall under the Apex, we would fall under the Apex Carp and um, uh, exist in solidarity in our community. So, uh, let's go to the next page. So our vision for an electricity co-op for Musenberg, um, that's our, our logo, we have a, our name has been reserved, we've signed a memorandum of understanding in February, March, um, where we all agreed that there were certain um, reasons for why we would want to incorporate, and um, we've also uh, drafted a constitution. Um, the thing is, we want to reflect a and community. We don't want to approach the CRPC with a registration application um, being at the minimum lowest level. We want to come from a position of strength. We want um, at least double our members, triple our members, have a lot more feed in from, from the people who are silent. We want to, to, to uh, recruit and campaign and canvas and, and get people involved to become uh, part of our co-op because there's a uh, a stipulation in the Act that um, if you have less than five members for more than five uh, six months, you would have to apply to essentially deregister and become some other entity, uh, like a private company. And that's, that's not what we want to do. Um, I should just uh, inform everyone that there is a, a Discord channel, um, so people who might not be able to make it can follow um, our report. So. If, you can log in and um, catch up with other people who might be online. So what is a cooperative? Uh, essentially, a co-op is a voluntary association for mutual benefit. Um, usually there's a, um, a member uh, fee that, that is involved in order to join the, the co-op. But um, the reason why people incorporate is so that you can um, derive benefits and primarily for conducting ordinary business that you would be um, Undertaking. So, uh, a good example is uh, a car in South Africa. It's one of the oldest ones, is the uh, KWV, um, Stellenbosch, uh, Van Marcus, uh, Matsuko Pay, where uh, we all understand how that works. If you're a farmer uh, uh, planting your, your vineyards and you have seasonal workers and you essentially got a product, and every year you're bringing a product to market, um, the Buddha decided to let's get together to pull our resources because. Not everyone has enough wine barrels, not everyone has access to the marketplace, you've got logistics. Uh, it's far better to do it um, with others than to do it yourself. So um, the ethos of uh, doing it um, with others, is, in our estimation, is far better than do it yourself because do it yourself is do it alone. Um, so why, why would we want a, a car um, in, in the world of technology and electricity? Well. First of all, we can collectively purchase um, and lower the costs involved to creating our um, battery modules or our PV systems. If we, to expect every household to come up with the 40k, 50k, uh, and that's a proposal from the city, right? They've got us covered if you can put down 50k and, and, and get money from, from the, the feed-in tariff. If you can't get a loan, or you, you're in debt, or you're just not able to, your income just won't cover the, the initial startup, um, you, you're at a serious disadvantage. So the, the, we've located an uh, urgent need within our community. Um, I'll point to the, uh, one of the primary reasons why you want to join us is that um, we would be able to approach the finance institutions for funding to essentially create loans for our members. And um, uh, unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to create, a, I would like to create a nice slide to actually demonstrate in an in a, in a animated way how that might work. So I'm, I'm going to just talk. Um, don't worry about my slides. But I'm just going to talk to, to this point that um, you, what we see happening is a, a person joins our car. Um, you apply for a loan, you purchase your, your components by the car, where we've got collective bargaining, collective agreements. And the beauty of the system is that what we foresee when it comes to um, 
homeowners um, that you're paying off. Sorry, excuse me. Um, sorry. Yes, um, it's annoying. I'm walking around. Um, okay, so, so here's the beauty of, of collective bargaining and doing it with others. Uh, as a group, we accessing the PV systems, uh, locating labor in the community to install the PVs, and then um, you, th that feed-in tariff would be used to obviously um, service the loan that you would get via the, the cooperative. Um, so we, 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 it's a modest proposal, we're not promising anything because it's a provisional application, we still have to have our application approved. But our, if you look at our business plan, what we intend to do is create um, uh, a, a cohort of accredited um, uh, personnel within our organization, within the co-op, who would be able to assist um, the community in installations. Uh, there will be also educational opportunities. We're wanting to partner with uh, various uh, academic institutions. Um, and also to create uh, um, what I refer to, um, you know, lifelong learning um, situation where people can access uh, certification by um, relatively cheap or next to nothing gratis um, uh, academic opportunities to become um, installers of our PVs. Um, so there's a skill skill sharing, ongoing educational opportunities. And um, point six for me is the, the real winner. Um, I hadn't actually realized this until I started reading the Cooperatives Act and started um, investigating how other co-ops, uh, particularly in the world of agriculture, are run. Um, the Musenberg co-ops, as it's proposed, as our, as, it, as our constitution has been drafted, um, would distribute any profits that are um, created through ordinary business to the members um, and it would be done under a patronage um, proportion system where those who are most active um, for instance if you are responsible for more than one percent of turnover in the in the co-op then you are uh, rewarded for your involvement um, and you're rewarded before everyone else so those who are silent members would be, uh, it's a sort of a queue kind of a first in, a sort of most um, valuable in, not least valuable out, last. So the person who, if, if you are involved, if you are creating turnover for the co-op, then you are rewarded through a uh, patronage distribution on an annual basis after the financials are completed and after the, um, the general reserve has been allocated. Right. Um, so who, who are our members? Um, our primary target markets are homeowners and the, the general rental um, tenants of Musenberg and, our, and the surrounding um, areas. Uh, we foresee a secondary market evolving once we are in a position of strength and able to uh, accommodate um, such outreach and those are the neighboring commun underserviced communities, satellite communities in the southern peninsula, such as Freyfront, Capricorn, and um, Marcy, and various other places that are underserviced. But we're not, we're not a charity organization. We're, we're a, an organization incorporated, very similar to how a company or corporation is incorporated but under the Cooperatives Act, where there's a, a cost plus um, margin. We are uh, essentially trying to um, make money, make profit, um, and, and doing it because we try, we, we, we're acting in solidarity with our community. The issues to do with uh, outreach and acts of charity are uh, the medium to long term outlook, uh, not, 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 not short term goal at all. Alright, um, so how, how can you assist us? Um, I urge everyone to become members, to sign up, um, to register. <laughs> I haven't found my link yet, 
but it's somewhere on the program. There's a link. Um, uh, because we, we uh, are, we've only been going for three months. We're still getting a lot of our resources. We're still getting um, coding our platform. But um, so the, an ordinary member. Well, who is an ordinary member? What is an ordinary member? Ordinary member is someone who pays our the, the annual membership, um, which is anywhere between 100 and 150 rand at the moment. Um, uh, you're entitled to join, to, to attend meetings, to access uh, resources, to get uh, be part of the group build, um, and uh, a lot of a lot of benefits like t um, hopefully in the future like merchandise and t-shirts and um, free seminars and so on. Um, then we have another category of um, member, which is a supporting or donor member, and that is a person who on our form there's a um, option to pay on a monthly basis if you wish to um, support us um, any, uh, over and above the annual fee. So um, if you um, um, wish, you may award our organization um, a monthly stipend um, anywhere from uh, 200, 250 to 1,000 Rand um, a month uh, would qualify you as a, a supporting or donor member. Then there are um, another category of members who are associates or affiliates. Um, associates or affiliates are, are non-ordinary members who would not have voting rights at our AGM. Um, but like a corporate, for instance, like Pick and Pay, might wish to uh, associate their brand with our venture. Um, and they may uh, associate or affiliate in some way. And we're still obviously working out the fine print, working out the logistics and legalities of all of this because we have yet to incorporate. This is a modest proposal. Our constitution has been drafted, but it hasn't been ratified by the general membership. So there's still opportunity for people to have input into that drafting process. Right, so just to... Um, refresh as to how we got to where we are today. Um, in February, we signed an MOU um, amongst active members, um, just accepting why we were here and what, what it was that we were doing. Um, through March, we've undertaken to draft a constitution. The constitution is available on our website. Um, today is our first Battery Day event. We foresee um, a lot more of these Battery Day events, given that there's a crisis. Ordinarily, something like this you'd have once a year, but we, 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 we need to ramp up. And the only way we can do this is to recruit, is to canvas, is to publicize, is to market, is to approach uh, the media, and to, to try and create a story of um, uh, we the local heroes, we're rising to the occasion, it's a Christ opportunity, and we refuse to accept that there are days without electricity in our community. That, 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 that's a non-negotiable. Every time the CEO of ESCOM stands up and says there's going to be less load shedding, that's a fail in my, in, in my estimation. That's accepting defeat. That's not the country that I wish to be, be a part of. I'm not proud of being a South African as we speak. So we wanted to create um, local heroes, local stories. Um, we want to work with the press. We want the media to, to uh, run with our, our marketing materials. And we foresee that in, over the next two months that our um, constitutional drafting process will be complete. And at that point in June, uh, 1st of June, we intend to lodge our constitution at the CRPC. That's if they will allow us. I don't see any, any um, reason why they will reject our application. But like I said, I'd like to approach the CRPC with a, from a position of strength. That we're not just a, a group of five people with the lowest amount of people needed to, to pass that hurdle. I'd rather that, uh, that we, if we could go from an A1 class cop to a B or a C, have 500 members, that would be even more fantastic. So, what do we see the future evolution of the Music Lake Car? Um, how we imagine our world is an interconnected, networked community running on renewable energy. Renewable energy is anything 
which doesn't um, deplete the resources of the earth, that's uh, renewable, that's self-replenishing, such as the wind, um, the sun, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot to be said about um, ocean thermal currents, uh, which hasn't been, I don't see any projects out there at all tackling the ocean energy. There's a lot of kinetic energy in our community. Uh, there's, there's gravity. There's a lot of ways to create electricity. I'm hoping to demonstrate later today some of the um, projects involving battery storage. We've chosen to focus on battery storage of renewable energy precisely because that's the part that we've left out in my, in, in, in my um, analysis of what is wrong. And I speak from a, as an environmentalist. I'm one of the founding members of Earth Life Africa, um, past steering committee, people's health movement. I've been involved in NGOs, Sangoko, and um, the anti apartheid movement. Um, and I can speak to the problems that I've experienced from that, um, working with NGOs, working with government, working with the church, uh, South African Council churches, working with Kasatu. Um, we need to get off that roundabout. We need to get off the, um, the, the, the push-me-pull-you bureaucratic tinkering with the system and actually embrace real change, real opportunities. And like I said, we don't have to change. We create the wheel. We have an enabling piece of legislation known as the Golf Resources Act. So where we foresee it is a community microgrid that is coupled to the macro grid. The macro grid is your ESCOM, which is failing. The micro grid is anything um, from the, your home system, uh, electrical system, your DB box, anything in, inside your house your, your micro, is your micro grid. The, your community can be your micro grid. Your metro can also be perceived as a microgrid. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Dr. Uh, Krishna Murti will um, provide us with more input at 12, uh, 12 o'clock on um, issues to do with uh, um, PVs and home, home energy systems. So what we foresee is a robust technology support initiative able to assist neighboring communities by a technology pipeline. What that means is that we, we wanting to um, set up channels to, to source the necessary components to those components to go to the projects that we've decided are um, going to be uh, the use case um, projects, whether the battery modules, there are types of battery modules, so we've done a lot of um, talk and um, arguments and analysis about how a battery storage economy might function, that we would not actually need um, a, a grid-tied grid system at all. We could, like your gas uh, bottles, we could shop, shop out, ship out your, your battery modules, people could drop them off, we could find ways to, to um, replenish and, and, and charge the, the batteries. So there, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm, a lot of um, um, which, which you call proposed ideas. But we, what we want to do is create a system um, where we weed out the bad, bad, unworkable, you know, get a, you know, ideas like let's let's get a big um, magnifying glass and focus the energy on some molten salt. Um, rather, focus on what is workable. With the, within the confines of our budget, within the confines of our know-how and our skills, we create a, um, a pipeline of development where we scale it up from our small modules to our larger, much larger modules with the BMS. I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit later. All right, so. So, okay, so the, the, it's just a quote that I, I've, it's always been with me um, since I began my career as an activist back in the 80s. And um, small, you know, it's, it's just a small group of people who are committed to change can change the world. 
that's just to paraphrase uh, Margaret, Margaret Mead, who is an interesting American activist. And that's um, my presentation. So thank you so much for, for arriving and um, listening to me. Um, so now I guess there's question time, opportunity for people to ask questions and to engage, and to talk about. Can just see what the time is. Yes, five minutes. What time? Oh, there we go. Okay, so up on the hour. So we've got 15 minutes. Um, question time. Any questions? Um, are, there, are there initiatives like this that you're aware of? Um... Um, I actually did some research and the only similar project that I've managed to locate is a very small um, cooperative in Gabega. It's a couple of blokes, you know, Kasi, who've uh, essentially incorporated themselves as a co-op where they've got a carport where they install PVs on the carport and I, I don't have the the name at my, well, my working memory right now, but that's the only one I've managed to find so far. When you look at who, who are the competition, who are the other people doing cooperative stuff, there is nothing, it seems. If, if anyone knows of anyone doing something similar, I'm very surprised that, that people haven't gone down this road. And it seems like that's, it's really emblematic of what is wrong with this country where there seems to be this paralyzation between those who are private capital and those who are government and land. It's been this, like a, what's the clown, um, Bozo Bongo, the clown, like a Laurel and Laurel and Laurel, the, the, the three stooges. It's the three stooges that have been running, running the show since day one. You know, business, labor, and bureaucracy, governments, right? That's, that's how, like cooperatives, it's like another dimension that, that we definitely need to, to, to explore, and that's why I'm enthusiastic. Dave. Dave, yes. I just want to reflect upon you, how fantastic it is that you focalize this, firstly, the battery day itself, yes, yes. very cool initiative. Uh, secondly, you brought the union of your knowledge and your workings with the government right. to bring this all together and make um, <clears throat> make me aware of a lot of the stuff that I haven't followed down that little pathway. Right. So a lot of the legislative stuff around uh, communities, around um, cooperatives, I didn't know anything about. So I think it's really cool that you brought that in. Yes. Um, and then, just I'm really excited about what I'm going to hear later on. Yes. Because this is something that I've been very interested in been looking at on my own yeah. uh, terms. And one of the ways I was thinking of doing is they're pretty large, like 30 kilovolt inverters that I found on um, overseas sites. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking how cool it would be to have a 30 kV inverter distributed panels yes. over uh, proximal um, houses yeah. and then s sharing the profits and the feed-in tariffs yeah. from that. Okay. So it sounds like that's more or less the direction you go. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that you've actually raised this issue because we, you know, it's, it's been it's a bit of like a madhouse because you go, you go down a rabbit hole and there's like a million one other rabbit holes that you burrowing into other bits of information when you come across the subject. It's quite a large terrain of information. Um, so when uh, the People's Post published a, an article after I'd been interviewed by Chad, who unfortunately couldn't be here today because he's at Africa Burns pre-party, pre um, I suggested that the, the proposal was, let's create a reasonably big battery, right? And then you end up with, but we don't have the, like, it's a lot of capital, and you've got a scope, and you've got this, like, uh, you've got to get permission, and you've got to find the land, and there's a lot of issues, right? So then we, we, we sort of said, well, let's focus on things, projects that we can actually do ourselves. So then we, we, we went down the, the battery storage route, and the first project that we, um, that I said you proposed was a, um, a PCB battery um, pack. 
where there's um, very nice fuses and it's all very really, you know um, interesting. But the the, the, the new encounter the, the the costs of the components and the supply chain and, and sourcing those components in order to populate the PCB. And then you, you go, let's go back back a bit. Maybe we need to go back to basics. Let's just try and and, and build a basic um, like a, a junk pack, like something that's literally Stone Age from the 80s, right? And try and see whether if we start at, at ground zero, we can maybe uh, develop have a developmental uh, process. So then what happens is a lot of these projects become um, parallel parallelization of these projects. So while we focusing on our basic essential modules. We've um, gone down the various accounts of other PCB projects. And then you end up with um, questions like, hang on, what do we need to do to build a BMS? Because these BMS from ch these, these, these cheap Chinese BMSs aren't necessarily the things that we want. Maybe, maybe we want, um, you know, this is the uh, 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 7S, um, BMS battery management. Yeah. For, um, so the so seven um, batteries in, in series, um, and you can have your ten p in parallel batteries. Um, so so, but this is a very like if you look at it, and you know what is on this board, like what are the components, and what is it actually doing? Is it actually going to balance? Is it going to work? You know, there's no Bluetooth. There's there's, there's no reporting back. Um, then where's the app for the for the BMS? And hang on, if I'm if I'm if I'm, and this is I'm, I'm kind of going into my later presentation, but seeing as I, there's so few people, I'd rather repeat myself. Um, so this is the one of the PCB board projects we have got, and we've actually figured a way to put the BMS on the PCB. So then you you deal away you do away with an entire component. You've got just one circuit board, right? So then you then you, you go into this um, crazy uh, rat hole of but hang on, we still need the inverter, right? And if I'm going to go purchase an extra um, com like whole thing, that's more money, right? So hang on, is there a way to get rid of the inverter, rid of the BMS, and have everything? Um, a unified project, and that's what, what, what I find interesting about our developmental path is that we're asking those questions and we're appealing to the, the techies because we want to have a, our, our systems certified, we want to have our um, standards, you know, in, we, we don't want to kill anyone along the way. The lithium batteries can blow up, so you've got to have some kind of um, thermal heat, you know, the thermistors and management of the of the load, we 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 got now started that it's literally it's like I feel like I'm announcing that I'm going to go to Mars or something and I'm riding a bicycle, but we've determined that we can build bicycles if we have to. So that's your question. But, but, um, what are the, uh, the the cities initiatives at this stage? I mean, they're all they're all greater plans to, to, sort of, to attempt to solve this problem. That's the you know, first question. The second question yeah. is feeding back into the grid. Yes. Um, because by feeding back into the grid, you reducing the dependence on, on storage. Is that, is that something that's... Yeah, um, um, uh, I'm not persuaded that that is the solution. That, 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 but think about it. But have we actually... Have we actually... Like, can I just answer sure, this question? Yeah. Yeah. Have we actually gone through, like, worked out what happens if you start feeding in everything into the macro grid? Like, that, for me, there's something um, wrong with that approach. Uh, I think we need to focus on the micro scale. We need to look at uh, resilience and, 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 and self-sustaining, su supporting communities. And when I say this, it's because I, I, I look at what people are doing in Australia, where, where you've got communities where they've set up their battery storage systems, and it's, you, you've got your community not dependent on anyone else, because they can buy and sell electricity from the highest bidder. Or, or, or places like New Zealand, where there are um, several operators, 
you know, only three of which have government uh, shareholdings, right? Where there's a, a, a completely deregulated environment and you can purchase your power from a, a, a company run by women who get their energy only from renewable resources, right? At the moment, it's a grab bag. You, you're getting your energy from anywhere. And so for me, ESCOM's gone down this road of buy the whole store, right? Get everything, that, like get, whether it's nukes, whether it's coal, whether, they want everything. And they've become this bloated dinosaur with a piece, piece of the brain on the verge of extinction. Um, but just to, to, to get back to this, this thing of the, the creating um, the development which um, comes up with innovation. So we need, to, we need to go back to the drawing board and, 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 and drive innovation. And I'm not persuaded that the governments, um, essentially it's not the aegis of the metro. Let's just sign, let's just legislate away the problem. Is that going to solve our, our, our situation? Is legislation going to create more energy? Yes, they've, they've, let's, let's lift the cap on, on, on what we can produce. Let's create incentives like feed-in tariffs. What I'm looking for is community tariffs which support cooperatives. We are the cooperative tariffs. We are the, the, the community tariffs. How can we as a community create our own system? Unfortunately, there is a, a, a piece of legislation which governs the sale of electricity in this country, which is nuts, right? It's, 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 for me, it's, it's kind of like um, 19th century stuff. If you look at the history of, of electricity in the country, it started off as a private, private capital. You, every suburb would have its little power station. There was a tram, a tram system running on electricity, and there were private companies. And then in the 50s, um, because of people like Jan Smuts and J.G. Stradom, the idea arose that they would create this large um, mega parastate. And it was the same solution, was, 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 um, it was known as Volks Capitalism, and it was also um, the steel industry. So ISCOR, for instance. It's that one big, large steel production system that's producing all the metal and have it downstream. Similarly with electricity. One big electricity provider and everyone is downstream from us. Right? And we're living in a country that's got a backbone that, that, where this, that they can't turn off because the whole system would go down. And then they've got all this um, uh, satellite. Everything's like a, a, on, a, on a string, right? And that's failing. That's not worth it. It hasn't kept up with progress. We, we, we're producing electricity solutions for a country of 20 million people when the reality is it will be 60 million people and we, most of them, half of which are underserviced, uh, living kind of service communities. So that's my... Yeah, so, yeah. okay, let's just put my point of view. I, I started about 12 years ago. Yes. And I, I became, I was one of three on a pilot project to feed into the city. Yes. Literally 12 years ago. And uh, they gave us special meters in our houses. We put up a system and we pushed back. They gave us, at the time we had a prepaid meter, so you would be given units at the end of each month or every three months. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's progress since then. You know, we've got the city through the whole process of certification and filling in forms and things. And, and, and that's, that, that's where we are today. You can feed in. You, your problem is it's a, a 12,000 grand meter because the, the Landis and Gower meter is the only sort of semi-industrial meter you have to go through. Yeah. It's 12,000 grand. Um, I did speak to the DA Shadow Energy Minister um, a couple of nights ago who was in Ronneboch today. There's a single phase meter coming out in about September, October. Right. It's probably priced at about 2,000 grand. That's what he estimated. So at least that's, that's going to satisfy the, the single phase house. Okay. And a lot cheaper. Um, you can your, you're going to be on our, sorry, it's just, no, no, your, your, our, our round table. Yeah. That, that we're going to have a, a, a oh, round table that? session. We're all going to okay, sorry, break, yeah. break open into yeah. a, a, a roundness and have this okay. opportunity to. Um, because right. so, 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 I just want to get back to your wielding, pro your right. wheeling problem. So you, 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 you want you want to do wheeling over 
you, you, have a, you have a grid at the moment, and yes. this will devolve to a, a grid. Yes. The wires connecting, you, know, you had a 30 kilowatt yes. unit, you're only going to use five or so. Yes. It's got to wheel it through the grid. Right. So until that, that sort of structure gets put in place, you're not going to be able to do it. You get, and uh, I, I generate, for instance, yeah. I generate at home more than I need. So I fill up my battery, mm -hmm. and that's where I use feed in because you have to set your system up for the worst case scenario yeah. and that on most days it's not that it's the rainy days and the night times that you catering for so you want to feed back otherwise you're going to throw the electricity away and this is the problem at the moment people are putting up big fancy systems they're not feeding in and so the they're wasting it because the, the, the sun panels are shut down at once the battery is full and everyone loses it should be going to the city. The city give you a rand a kilowatt hour for feed in, and they charge in your immediate neighbors two rand. So on every unit I give in, they make two rand. They should give you the feed in meter for nothing. I agree. So, so then everyone, um, sorry, okay. So, 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that people are going to stay with us yeah. um, during the course of the, the day. Um, and we we're hopefully going to address all these issues. Okay. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I would like to start the just to, uh, to, to, to pose a, a question because I don't want to rock the boat too much. Right? Yeah. But I, I, I feel that people, there's something that's been lost, and that is the ICT revolution. It's not part of this, this, this picture. So it's this very old school kind of like uh, 20th century thinking that, that, you, that you've got to have infrastructure and that the only way to feed in units is to feed it into the city tariff mechanism and everyone else is restricted by a piece of legislation that says you, you can't make money off electricity. It's the grid somewhere. You right. can't. No, hang on. So, so, no, no, sir. So, um, I'm not talking about the physical manifestation of voltage and amps. What I'm talking about is the information revolution which um, would exist in parallel to that system where, for me, I'm not persuaded that the bulk sale of electricity via the metro is the only solution to our problem. Why is it not possible? And this is a, a solution which uh, ten, 10 years ago I attended a, a seminar by David Lipschitz, who's now an energy expert, an ETV expert, right? And he proposed a virtual uh, power station. And he said, why can't we have a virtualized um, tariff system? If, you know, if, if you abstract the, 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 the um, tariff structure, you could have any number of other independent operators providing you with services. Same, it's been done with um, the, uh, cell, so the, the networks and the, the, the what you, uh, cellular networks, where it's the, the, the people who created those networks to begin with, right, owned the networks, but then there were abstractions of the network that were allowed other operators to, 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 to enter the, the terrain of a free market, right? Like Bluetel, um, Virgin, for instance, at one point was oper operating as a virtual telco. There's nothing physically. Um, ch uh, that, that impedes the progress of a virtualized abstracted tariff yeah. system. Mm -hmm. The only thing which is preventing that from happening is the, this 19th century view of a pyramid scheme, right? I don't know how that evolved. It came from the mining industry, and then it came, you know, some of the guys who were the private capitalists got involved and thought, let's just get together and run the country as one big company it became like the Republic of South Africa under Falk's capitalism of the National Party and that system essentially was inherited by the, by the, the ruling party and they haven't changed it because it works for certain people it works for the ba certain banking magnets it works for those recently empowered mining magnets it works for people, politicians in Pretoria, but it doesn't work for me or you, because the, if you look at the price, and I, I, you know, I could, there are uh, hundreds of presentations that you can go into 
cost of, of volts and watts and amps and hours in South Africa. And if you look at the, the data, what you see, it's almost like an exponential curve that goes up. It's this every year, 18% increase is I'm drowning in a system that is uh, milking the consumer, that is not consumer friendly, that we, we have removed consumer choice out of the equation and replaced it with government uh, largesse. We need to bring back consumer choice, sir. Yes, sir. Charles Cruz, sorry, I was late. Okay. You forgive me. But um, I think I, 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 I understand why there's this unease about this because you're talking microgrid. And uh, I'm an engineer, so I think, so where's the physical microgrid? Are we saying that we, that what you're saying, by uh, using IT solutions, you use the in-place grid, Yes. you utilize that physical resource that exists, yes. but then you actually integrate with it, with, an, with a system that runs sort of semi-independent, but through that infrastructure. Yes, so, um, so, so to summarise, um, yes. it's a modest proposal and, and, and one of the pr proposals on the table aside from this is become a carpet. So we, we first fix the problem of, of, of the rental um, tenants and, and homeowners who can't afford PVs and, and don't have battery storage. Just fix that problem, right? By, by, by creating a, a pipeline, we be reducing low cost um, components, modules for our community. Then what we do is we create an internet networked system where we uh, we might, there's nothing and this is we, we don't have to legislate there's nothing that needs to be changed in our law because we are all free agents right we're all citizens we all have rights and there's nothing stopping you from contracting for instance yes I can uh, get my feed-in tariff and I get my coins from the city and I'm doing it alone. Why can't I do that with others? Can I not give some of that, 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 in, that input feedback to a poorer community? Is in no way of creating um, cross-cutting, interconnected, you know, intersectional um, solutions. Are we so incapacitated by that act that says you shouldn't be winning electricity and you shouldn't be dealing with electricity? Is that, is that what the political uh, platform would entail that we would essentially have to become uh, a political movement to change the, 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 the red tape, to get rid of the red tape, right? Like, is, it, is it such a challenge and is it such a hurdle? Right. I, I do see a difference between the, the grid and a set of red, um, cell phone towers. You can send RF from towers however you want to. Yes. The grid has to be synchronized yes. and it has to be all connecting. Yes, I'm talking about yeah. the billing systems. So, no, no, sure, but the billing, they, they are working on the wheeling aspect of that. That you can sell, you can provide energy, yeah. you'll be paid by the customers you are support. They're, you're just using the, the Eskom wire to get it to your customer. The billing will be separated and there's no problem with that. So, the other issue I've got yeah. was with building your own inverter battery unit. Yep. It's, you know, Cape Town, when, let's say 12 years ago, I bought my panels from PV assembler next to Hillstar. Yeah. It was made in Cape Town, these, these panels. Photovoltaics, 80 watts each. Right. I've, still, I've got 26 of them. Yes. They were beautifully made, no problem. Yeah. 25 rand a watt. The Chinese came in wacko. Right. The whole place cut down. We lost so many jobs yes. of the Cape Flats people that that's what happens. So as soon as you compete, yeah. you've got to compete against China. And that is very, very difficult to do. Um, so I, I can just, just to um, I acknowledge your, the, how yeah. you frame that, that, yeah. that question. And we, look, we do have opportunities in Asia and China. There are premium solutions where we could, um, OE, from OEMs, where we can, we could brand our above the line solutions, get, get them coming through us, and be competing with Macro, right? That, that, that's a no brainer. The, 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 the challenge is to lower the cost to entry. 
And here's, here's the, um, the challenge, because I want to challenge people. I want, I want people to feel challenged by today, right? I want to feel that, we, that, we, that we're moving forward in some way out of our, these, this BTV like sense of box, box lit, right? Here's the challenge. So, do I, do I understand you correctly, sir? You are telling me that I, as a, as a, as a citizen, as a resident or a homeowner, I'm expected to um, lay out quite a large sum of capital to buy technology so that the city can benefit of my um, money. Hang on, isn't this a, some kind of like a airbrand racket? Like a, a like it's a kind of like a cartel. Like you're asking me. Hang on. So 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 the mayor of Cape Town is expecting me. To um, he's got, if, if I give him my 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 surplus, mm. he sets the price of what he pays for my surplus. That's not a free market. That's some kind of like a captive game of like where there's like a you're playing the game of monopoly, but the banks always win, right? Well, the, is, that, is that controlled by the city? Yes. Or, uh, that's how. That's the system. Okay. What we've got. What we've got is an emerging because there's a, a trade-off between. The, the feed-in price, is that the There's a feed-in price, there's a, there's a bulk sale price, there's a, there's a, the, the, the whole system it operates on the assumption that, 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 that there's a central grid, there's, there's ESCOM, they, they have the bulk supply of electricity, and then you have metros like Cape Town essentially trying to wiggle out of Big Brother by sort of, um, it's kind of like creating a third-party tier, right? And I'm like, the mouse and I'm looking at the big large cat and going, but you still, you still got your paw on my tail. You, you still, you've trapped me. I mean, I'm like, look, another um, metaphor, like I'm a hamster in a cage, right? I, I'm expected to just be a trapped um, market for your bulk sale uh, program where I'm now asked, I must invest. The, the city isn't coming along here with loans. So to, to, and saying, hang on, we're going to, they're not putting PVs on my roof, right? They're expecting me to go to the bank and I'm a service the loan from the bank in order to, 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 to yeah. enjoy this opportunity yeah. after I've spent 40k an hour, I'm getting, that's a Constantia solution. That's, that's, if you live in Constantia, the DA have your backs covered, right? And unfortunately, I'm not a DA, I'm not a politician, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realist. And, and for me as a realist, I'm so what, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real, right? But, but you see what's in your... Sorry, I'm sorry.